Welcome back, everyone, to another Spooky Saturday video. I am your narrator, Paranormal Poet, and a happy October to you all. We have lots of spooky stories ahead and lots of chills to be had, so let's not waste any more time. Hold your loved ones tight, your flashlights tighter, as we prepare to be spooked. If there's one thing we, as a species, love, it's oral stories. Tall tales of giants and heroes slaying monsters and ending the story with usually a woman and glory. But those stories aren't for us. They're for kids. They may be frightening to some, because to them, it seems real. But we, adults, know it's made up. However, there are some stories that are far scarier than others. The ones that actually happened. And tonight, I will bring you three true, chilling stories of untold and unnerving experiences with the paranormal. So, put the kids to bed and dim the lights. It's about to get spooky. Story 1 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Rose, and this experience I had while camping truly chills me to my core. For context, where I live has beautiful, luscious forests, some going on for what seemed like forever. I had my whole weekend in front of me, so I decided to do something to keep me occupied. It was a fair day in Pennsylvania, and I decided to take a solo camping trip in the mountains of the Allegheny National Forest. I'd been up there a few times before, but usually for day hikes. Many trails, beautiful wildlife. What more could a nature lover ask for? One of those trails is eerily called the River of Blood. Another common trail for brave hikers is called the Witch's Walk, where hikers get a chance to experience the dark, bloody past of the battle between the Continental Army and the Seneca Indians in 1779 that took place in that exact forest. Now some people, and by people I mean friends of mine who've hiked that trail reported strange noises made by something inhuman. All that is seen in the darkness is a deer skull and what looks to be a tall man. Now I've never experienced something to that extent before in this forest, so I should be fine. I finally made it to one of the few campsite locations called Jake's Rocks Overlook. A beautiful view of Jackson Bay on the Allegheny Reservoir is enough to calm anybody down. After I parked my car, I began unloading my gear and preparing myself for the long night ahead. I knew it was going to be cold and I got the urge to explore and do some good old night hiking. This wasn't my first rodeo. I liked the quietness and the ease of mind from the stress of the day. I walked a trail probably five to ten minutes away from me. I just wanted to warm my body up before I went to sleep. I figured tonight would be too cold for a tent and a sleeping bag, so I'd be safe sleeping in my car. As I began walking back, a heavy feeling of dread suddenly hit my chest. It was so sudden and felt just dull and profound. I shrugged it off as much as I could. Then, as I peeked the hill overlooking the campsite, I saw something bizarre. I saw a light. But this wasn't the light from a camper or hiker. I was the only one in the area. The next camper was a few minutes down the road. This light was hovering over the fire pit. It emitted a strange pulsing glow, and it was phasing in and out. Something about that light made me feel uncomfortable. It dulled for the last time, and then it was gone in the blink of an eye. I took this chance to make a run for it. As I ran to the car from the side of me, I heard something growling, like a dog growling, but sounded as if a human was making that noise. I had enough for one night. I opened the trunk where my sleeping bag was set up for the night and closed it quickly. Silence fell around me. I could hear my heartbeat, the clearest I've ever heard. Whatever was surrounding my car 
It paced back and forth, waiting, growling. After a few minutes, it lost interest in me and left. I never went camping alone ever again. Story 2 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Callie, and I will flat out say I am a skeptic of the paranormal. Well, was a skeptic. In order for you to understand why this experience made me change my personal beliefs, you need to know why I went there in the first place. The date was May 5th, 2018, and all was a normal day. For now, of course. I was relaxing at home before the drive to an infamous location, THE location, The Conjuring House. I was given this unique opportunity to get a tour of the place, but best of all, I got a chance to stay overnight. If there was ever an appropriate time to find evidence, it was going to be tonight. I got everything ready and met my mom in the car. We said our goodbyes for the night and assured she'd be back to pick me up in the morning and to have a good time. I made my way to the front of the house. Upon reaching the property, I was amazed with how the architecture of the house and the age of the wood and the land that it was on was in fact original. It was, in my eyes, a beautiful place. A stark contrast of what I felt when I opened the door. Upon entering the house, the energy shift was instant. I didn't want to visibly show my discomfort, so I pushed it to the back of my mind as best as I could anyway. When I got to the room with the replica Annabelle doll, I felt something was wrong. The doorways made it feel like the second I turned to look down one, a tall shadow was going to be there. I felt really strong eyes on me. It was hard to ignore. After the initial tour, the owner of the property told me to be careful while exploring, especially the old barn, and to let her know of anything in case of emergencies. Now I was truly alone. It was around midnight, and I was doing some additional exploring. Aside from hearing strange noises, occasional voices, and flickering lights, I wasn't bothered. Those things can be explained. What would happen next can't really be explained. Being in a large house by yourself, particularly a supposed haunted house, can mentally tax you. So I found a spot in the living room and I sat down and proceeded to read my book that I brought along. I was quietly reading when suddenly I heard a long creaking noise. I figured it was a door, but when it just kept creaking, I was suspicious. So I look up, and to my horror, the cabinet to the replica Annabelle doll slowly swings open in front of my eyes. Keep in mind, there are no drafts. I made sure to close windows and doors, and there was nothing logical in that moment to explain it opening as wide as it did. My heart began racing. As I stood up, closed the case tight, and bolted into the room I'd been staying in, retiring for the night. The next morning, in the car ride home, my mom asked me what I saw there. Now, I didn't say anything in response, but I knew, my mom knew, whatever I experienced was paranormal. Now, I am a believer. Story 3 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Simon, and this is probably the most unnerving experience I've ever lived through. Now, I'm not much of a believer in the paranormal, but I was always open to the idea. I just never got the evidence myself, but that would all change for me. For privacy, I won't disclose the county. The setting was summer of 2019. It was an ordinary day in the life of a suburban grown kid. The trees were just tall enough to provide shade on hot days, and the sound of scooters and bikes and skateboards filled the air. At least, that's how it sounded on my street anyway. Now here's where things got interesting. 
In our neighborhood, we had a couple move into this beautiful two-story house. It was well known because the front had Victorian-style decor and made it stand out against the modern-day canvas of houses on my street. But this couple wasn't there very often. It was just the two of them, and some days they would be there, and other times they'd be gone, weeks at a time. It was incredibly odd. Anyway, my habit back then was to scooter around the neighborhood after homework was finished to relax, but also enjoy the freedom of moving around. It was incredibly freeing being able to ride. At dusk, closer to night, I would scooter for a little bit and then get back inside before it was pitch black, usually with friends or by myself. My mom trusted me and the neighborhood, which was a comfort. So one night, I'm riding on my scooter, cruising along. When I look at the Victorian-style house, I see the porch light is on. This made me feel weird. Of all the times I've ridden by it, it was never on. Now suddenly it was. It piqued my interest, and I began walking up to the front porch landing. I double-checked to ensure the people who owned it were gone before I went further. They were. When I reached the landing of the porch, I was met with the sight of a baby stroller. This was out of the ordinary for them. As far as we knew, they never let us know of a kid that they had, and we never saw the stroller in our lives. Then, suddenly, my heart began pounding out of my chest as I saw the baby stroller move towards me. On its own, accompanied by the sound of a baby cooing, or was it crying? I don't know. I nearly froze up and got down the stairs as safely but as fast as I could. I never stepped foot on that property ever again after that. That had no logical reason to move. It was a fair night, no breeze or strong wind. What's worse, anyone I tell doesn't believe me. But I couldn't stay silent forever, and I knew you would at least get my story out there. That was the scariest night of my life. If you enjoyed this video, and you are new here, definitely please hit that subscribe button as we do this every Saturday. I truly appreciate you all for being here. See you next Saturday.